Hi and welcome to my channel. So my name is Nienke de Glas, I'm a clinical epidemiologist and here I want to share with you the results of our study in which we developed the portrait tool. So the portrait tool was aimed to predict recurrence, other cause mortality and survival in older adults with breast cancer and I look forward to share the results with you. So let's get started. So in my previous videos, I showed you that the risk of dying of breast cancer unfortunately still increases with age, as is here represented by the red bars. However, the risk of dying of other causes, which is here represented by the blue bars, increases even more with age. And this makes it important for us to be able to predict these two outcomes separately, because they can really aid in the decision to treat or to not to treat uh, patients with a high or a low risk of dying of other causes. And this is also one of my favorite slides showing that uh, in older adults it's extremely important to weigh the benefits and risks of treatment. So if we talk about adjuvant therapy, so endocrine therapy or chemotherapy, on the one hand these are aimed to have patients live as long as they can, but on the other hand they come with the risk of side effects which can result in a decrease of quality of life and in functional decline, specifically in older patients. So historically, there were several prediction models that were used in daily clinical practice to make the decision to treat or to not to treat in the adjuvant setting. So we're talking about patients who have already received surgical treatment of their breast cancer and are now facing the decision whether they should, should or should not receive endocrine therapy or chemotherapy. And probably the oldest and most well-known tool to do this was adjuvant online. It's no longer available at this moment, but I'm still showing you this because it used to be the most important tool that was out there. And this tool worked in a way that um, uh, you could enter several characteristics of patients, so their age, something about comorbidity, although not very well standardized, and some characteristics of the breast cancer. And the tool would then provide you with the risks of dying of the cancer, dying of other causes, and the expected benefits of endocrine therapy and chemotherapy. However, this tool was developed in a relatively young and healthy cohort. And when we tested this tool in an older population, which was representative for the whole general population, we showed that this tool was not very helpful because it, it was unable to predict the actual risks of recurrence and survival, as you can see here. So another tool that is currently being used in daily clinical practice all around the world, world is the PREDICT tool. And it works basically quite similar to Adjuvant Online. So you enter some uh, characteristics of the patient and the tool then provides you with the expected risks of uh, mortality and of the expected benefits of treatment. But again, this tool was developed in a cohort that did not include very many older patients. And importantly, there was no comorbidity measure, nor was there anything about geriatric uh, predictors such as frailty or functional impairments. And we therefore performed a similar study in the PREDICT tool. And here on a group level, we saw that it actually performed much better than adjuvant online, which was quite hopeful. However, looking in more detail, it was shown that patients with higher age, especially over the age of 80, and patients with several comorbidities, which is approximately half of the population, did not have very valid predictions of PREDICT. So therefore we decided to develop a new tool that can really improve the uh, expected outcomes of treatment in older adults specifically. And for this we used very large observational and representative data using the Dutch Cancer Registry. And we wanted to incorporate geriatric variables. So not only comorbidity, which is an important predictor as I've previously shown, but also geriatric predictors such as functional impairments, uh, the use of hearing aids and polypharmacy. And the portrait tool aims to uh, predict relevant outcomes specifically for this population. So these include survival, recurrence, but also competing mortality, and of course the expected treatment benefits, as these can really help you in daily clinical practice. So as I mentioned, the tool was developed in a, in a population-based data set, which was the focus cohort with almost 3,000 patients. And they included uh, patients aged 65 years or older with stage 1 to 3 breast cancer who were surgically treated. And the tool was externally validated in a large cancer registry database of 13,000 patients. The predictors that we used in the tool were derived from the PREDICT, as we know that that was the best possible tool out there so far. And they were added with 
comorbidity and geriatric variables to further improve the predictions. We used Cox proportional hazard methods to uh, uh, develop the models and validation was assessed using discrimination and calibration as I've explained in a previous video. And finally, we added the treatment benefits based on the best available evidence that's currently out there. And these included the EBCDCG overview uh, of randomized clinical trials. So this is an overview of the main predictors that were used in the Porter tool. Many of those will be recognized from the PREDICT, as I previously mentioned. But importantly, uh, we also included comorbidities, difficulties in walking, so functional impairments, sensory handicaps, dementia, because this was also a very strong predictor of uh, competing mortality, and finally polypharmacy. And as I mentioned before, the tool was externally validated in a very large cohort. And here you can see the areas under the curve, so the discriminatory proportions of the tool, and they were around 0.75 for all outcomes. Also, the calibration plots are depicted here, and you can see that the uh, calibration plots are quite nice because the lines almost overlap the ideal red line in the middle. So we concluded that this tool was performing well in an external validation set and can therefore be used in daily clinical practice. So that was a first glimpse of the portrait tool, which will hopefully improve the individualized treatment strategies in older adults with breast cancer. We are currently in the process of the development of the web page and the certification. And once that is completed, it will become available online for all treating physicians free of charge. I look forward to receive any feedback or maybe questions, so feel free to leave them down below in the comment box. So see you next time.